Osioni God, what great energy. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Cherokee Nation Anna Mitchell Cultural and Welcome Center. And for those of you who are joining us virtually, this is being streamed online. What an exciting event. We're so happy to have you all here. Um, and I'm really excited to be serving as your MC for this event. I love fashion. I love ribbon skirts. I love the Cherokee Nation. This is the culmination of so much hard work for everyone who's been working behind the scenes and the artists. And I couldn't be more excited and more proud to be here. I hope you all feel the same way about this show. So a little bit, of, yeah, let's, hey, let's keep the energy going here. In addition to honoring the legacy of Anna Mitchell, this site was created also as a hub for a showcase Cherokee history and culture. So there's really not a better place to host today's celebration. Before we get started with the show, let's keep this energy going and, and show the artists who are going to be showcasing their ribbon skirts today. Let's show them some love. And so I want to um, go ahead and thank them for their hard work. Miss Cindy Evans, Jennifer Thiessen, Shadow Harbarger, Eva Cantrell, Julie Perkins, Kenny Glass, and Cherokee National Treasure, Tanya Hogner Weevil. Let's give them a round of applause. Yeah. Keep that going throughout the show. This state is home to the third largest native population in the United States. And ribbon skirts are a visible piece of our shared cultures. But do you know the history of the ribbon skirt? Many times, ribbon skirts are misunderstood. So as we begin, I'd like to invite the Cultural Program Projects Manager, Callie Chunstudy, to the stage to share more about the ribbon skirt and its origin and evolution. Let's hear it for Callie. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming to our first uh, ribbon skirt fashion show. We're really excited to present this to you guys today. And I just wanted to give you guys a short presentation. Uh, we're calling this Evolution of the Cherokee Ribbon Skirt, and we're really just talking about women's clothing over time. I'd like to take this one moment to thank my friend, designer, and Cherokee National Treasure, Tanya Hogner Weevil, for sharing her experience and research to this presentation so that we can share it today. From time immemorial to about 1800, the wrap was a constant garment for Cherokee women. The fabric changed, but the style lasted for centuries. Made of deerskin, mulberry cloth, and eventually wool, Cherokee women fashioned the wrap skirt by simply wrapping and overlapping either in the front or the back. <clears throat> An indigenous design, the skirts accommodated covering women as they grew, became pregnant, or lost weight. These skirts were secured at the waistline with a belt, and the skirt top folded over. The length reached the top of the knee, or the handbreadth above the knee. The wool wrap skirt became popular beginning about 1730. With more European ships came European trade. We began to trade for wool, mainly Stroud cloth, as Stroudwater England was the supplier of choice for most military uniforms in Europe. Another reason most early wools were red or blue is because of the military uniforms. Silk ribbon, was, silk ribbon from China was also brought over. Although not as flamboyant as the men's dress of this era, women did decorate their skirts with ribbon and trade silver ornaments. The chemise and petticoat were introduced in the southeast during the trade era, about 1730 as well. Europe's feminine undergarments became the southeast women's outer garments. Striped petticoats were wear, worn as skirts, and Cherokee women began wearing the chemise as a bodice garment, as a bodice garment for the first time in history. Before trade, Wraps of skins, feather capes, and blankets were used to women, cover women's upper half, and in the fair weather, they went topless. All people in the southeast were infiltrated with traders, missionaries, and early Americans during the 18th century, and fashion assimilated. No longer would Cherokee women wear distinctively tribal clothing until 1970, when the first hair dress was made and worn by Virginia Stroud. During the 20th century, and currently, Women dancing at ceremonial grounds wear skirts to accommodate the shackles worn on their lower leg. No specific rules have been set for this ceremonial skirt style, although they are, they are referred to as stomp skirts. Women prefer a full skirt or one with a flounce or ruffle at the bottom, and many are decorated with stripes of ribbon above the hem. 
The first tear dress made for Virginia Stroud by her sister for the Miss Indian America pageant in 1970 has a similar skirt and a 19th century utilitarian bodice inspired by a dress believed to have traveled here on the Trail of Tears. The design, this design is the hallmark for all tear dresses since. Today, Cherokee designers have embraced a nationwide movement in native fashion, creating skirts suitable for everyday wear, unconventional skirts to make a statement, and skirts made of luxurious materials, elevating them to formal wear. Like many Cherokee art forms, the ribbon skirt tells a story. Whether it is a singularly specific story or a larger cultural story, each skirt contains a message. I'd like to end with an adapted passage from the Indigenous Nouveau Ribbon Skirt Project. The ribbon skirt is a statement of solidarity for tribal women, an expression of womanhood and strength, a remembrance of the missing and murdered, a symbol of defiance, defiance and protection of natural resources, or a representation of the journey of those who are reclaiming their identities through traditional practices. The ribbon skirt has become armor, a cultural protection against assimilation and degradation. It is a symbol of resilience, survival, and identity, and the meaning changes with each personal story. What out? Wado, Callie, also thank you to Tanya Hogner Weevil, our Cherokee National Treasure, for compiling so much knowledge and information over the years. We always turn to Tanya when we have questions um, about what Cherokees would have been wearing. Um, and so it's just wonderful to be able to showcase all of that here today. Without further ado, it's time to start our show. So let's go ahead and get this show started. Give everybody a round of applause. My name is Cindy Evans. I'm a Cherokee textile artist. Because uh, I enjoy doing it. If I do something wrong, I can always rip it out and do it again. You know, it's kind of pretty easy. I tried pottery. I tried it, and it's kind of, for me, I couldn't breathe. And just trying to play with that. But this here, I can. Like, it's kind of something that I'm used to, I guess. I'm just used to material. I guess I get inspired when people want to wear my clothing. When I first started, not many women would be wearing skirts, especially in, in my club, and I'm in a women's club. And now, practically all of them have skirts. And it kind of makes me feel good in my heart that I can make clothing that people want to wear. I don't I wear skirts like this all the time, just because uh, I like to. <laughs> I don't know, probably about 12 years ago. But I've been sewing since I can pick up a needle and not prick my finger, is what I tell people, because uh, I learned from my grandmother. My sister, uh, she also helped me learn how to sew. We made our own clothes back in the 70s, I guess, you know? And uh, so uh, she wanted a skirt, so I made that, and then I started making skirts. And I call them kind of like a camp skirt, is what I make. I, nothing really fancy, it's just something like, uh, before you go to the cultural grounds, most people are kind of, well, I know I was raised, when we went to the powwow, there was people that camped out, and you walking around, you just want a skirt that you can walk around and work in, and I started making these skirts, just for people to wear. because our ancestors did. You know, it's just something that we do, and we need to keep showing our young ones that it's okay to be able to wear a skirt and um, feel comfortable. Like I said, I'm just really excited that women are wearing more uh, ribbon skirts, and they're enjoying it. I hope they like them. I don't, I mean, I hope they like my design. Like, it, you'll see a different designs, but mine, I kind of, kind of like to put a little bit of my heart and my soul in my skirts. It, it just kind of makes me feel good that I'm making something that people will enjoy to wear. <laughs>
My name's Jennifer Thiessen, and I'm a Cherokee artist. Because it's been effective so far in being able to raise awareness, I actually have a book that I take with me with my MMIW dress, Oklahoma Sisters. I take that with me, and I show people the articles. And they might say, oh, that's a pretty ribbon skirt. I want to buy that. Oh, what's this, what's this dress? Anybody can put a red hand print on a dress. Doing the research matters. Knowing what you're talking about matters. So when I incorporate the historical items that we did use into what I'm using now, a lot of research goes into that, and a lot of people um, just aren't aware. And so researching the history, especially of your own tribe, is very important. 
At times it's um, advocacy in addition to wanting it to be youthful and professional. At the same time, a lot of my pieces, like for the shows, really do advertise almost the sovereignty, the um, McGirt decision that's given us back. The Justice Gorsuch quote um, has a lot of meaning to me um, at the end of his Supreme Court opinion, where he says, at the far, far end of the trail was a promise. Before 2019, when I learned how to sew, that ribbon skirt class was the first time I ever made clothing at all. I was always um, more painter, you know, I painted, I drew. As a child, I wanted to be a Disney World animator. I wasn't great at it. And <laughs> when I started to learn how to sew, I really enjoyed it. And the fact that I could bring in my graphic design uh, I, with the historical research I do and the current um, research into the issues that face Native Americans, I've just really loved it. My style, um, I like to mix pre-contact colonialism with contemporary art. I want to make the ribbon skirts wearable to work and, and feel good about it and not feel like they're gonna be judged or comments made about them being in a costume or, oh, that's your Native American skirt. The fact that I was contacted by the Cherokee Nation to be a part of this very first um, fashion show means um, more, the, more to me than any other show because it's my, my community recognizing um, the art that I do. And if you'd asked me six years ago, uh, I would never have been able to tell you that, you know, being asked by my tribe to be a part of something like this, it's, it's very important to me.
my name is Shadow Hardbarger. I am a Cherokee artist. I would say a lot of my influence comes from my family because honestly, like a majority of my skirts, they have been touched by more than just one, just me. You know, my mom, she always helps with colors. My sister, she always has like a really great sense of style. But like a lot of the times, uh, the reason I created my page, Creating With Purpose, was because every single skirt I've ever made, it had a purpose. Like every single one I ever made, I visioned whoever I was making it for in that skirt. Like that was their skirt, that was their style. I think what's really important about Cherokee people is that we are like just one huge community and we're all supposed to be there for each other. And I'm really fortunate uh, whenever it comes to like my support system because they have always been there for me and I'm really, really grateful. Whenever it comes to like sewing, really ribbon skirts is the only thing I make. This is actually the first art form that I've actually really dived into because I'm very much kind of like a, I wanna try everything person. So like I've dabbled in pottery, I've dabbled in basketry, like uh, beadwork, all of that. And I like to know basics of everything just, you know, <laughs> for the day that uh, I might, you know, wanna use that art form. My very first one was back in 2018, I believe, but I didn't really start actually making them until about 2021. I wouldn't really say I have a style. I'm very much uh, open-minded, so I always like to try and experiment and try new things, and I'm always looking at other people's, trying to get inspired by their ideas as well. It feels nice to be recognized because it was one of my friends who actually was able to get me into it. He saw what I was doing with it and being able to also like kind of get my name and my page out there, it was like a great opportunity to be able to raise more money for my community and it just seems like um, I'm also kind of being recognized for my talent because like people always compliment them when my sister's wearing them or I'm wearing them. And I always feel pride whenever people are like, oh, your skirt's so pretty. And uh, so like to be able to be a part of this show, I really feel like, um, I feel like, I actually feel like an artist. <laughs> Something I've been asked a couple of times by some people is like, what does it, what does it mean? What are, what are they for, you know? And ribbon skirts per se aren't specifically Cherokee, but we do have like stomp dance skirts, which more the old style was like uh, patchwork instead of ribbons. But now like because a lot of people are diving into this art form, it's becoming more popular and I'm seeing it at the stomp grounds and stuff like that. And so like, just like tradition is always changing, this tradition is also changing, you know? It's becoming part of our lifestyle and so uh, as long as it gets, you know, young people excited, I'm super excited to uh, be a part of it.
My name is Tanya Hogner Weevil. I'm a Cherokee textile artist, and I was named a Cherokee National Treasure in 2012 in textiles. My journey as a Cherokee artist began in elementary school when I learned to sew from school in a home ec class. Many people didn't have that opportunity, but that's where I learned to sew. And when I moved to Tahlequah, I enjoyed sewing so much that I wanted to create the tear dress. And the tear dress was my first creation. And since then, it's been my journey to study what Cherokee people wore, to recreate those things, and to make people aware of the ingenuity of Cherokee people and Cherokee women to make our clothing and to bring it forward to today. I started making ribbon skirts when I was asked to. The fashion of ribbon skirts was fairly new to me, and so I followed someone else's example, and um, I like to make my customers happy, so I sew what they ask me to do. I enjoy making ribbon skirts and other textile arts because I'm always inspired and I'm always looking for ways to promote Cherokee culture that may be subtle but still cling to our ancient past. I really enjoy seeing the ribbon skirts because it has brought a lot of young artists to the world of sewing. And Cherokee women were seamstresses from way back. We've been textile artists from the day we had to cover our bodies. So I really appreciate that I've seen girls younger than 10 learning to sew on the sewing machine. It's something that our people don't continue to do because we don't have to. So what I really enjoy about ribbon skirts is that it's opened the door for many people to take up sewing. It's very honoring to be in this show because I'm among other people who are expressing their own ideas about how culture affects them and how they show it through this textile art. I like to make ribbon skirts that are easy to wear and that look good on the people who wear them. So I try to make skirts that flatter the women and that the women enjoy wearing. I'm inspired by the Cherokee world around me. I'm always looking at fashion, always looking at what people wear, taking ideas from others, from television, from magazines, from media. So I'm influenced by the world around me. The audience should know that in order to make art, it's a process far beyond putting your hands on the fabric. 
It's the idea, it's the perception, it's the purpose of why you're making the garment for people to see. I think all of these artists that are featured have an innate responsibility to the culture and they feel that responsibility. So I want people to know that it's more than sitting at a sewing machine and using a pair of scissors to, to create art. It's a whole world of enjoying the process of creating.
I'm Eva Cantrell, and I'm a Cherokee artist. I think it's because I saw my mom doing it from the time I was a little girl. My sister and I would sometimes even sit underneath the quilt, and if she dropped her needle or whatever, we would grab it and poke it back through for her. It was very easy for me. And of course, my mom was right there to teach me everything she knew. You know, like with pottery or basket weaving, it takes time, a lot more time than it does with sewing. With textiles, you get a lot quicker satisfaction. I like to um, combine my different art mediums into what I make. I've been doing ribbon skirts for about two, two and a half years. I just got bored and needed something new to do, so I fell back on my sewing. It's just a challenge. I need the challenge of doing something different. Oh, I'm very contemporary. Um, most of the traditional style ribbon skirts will use the, the fabric with the little tiny print and the little narrow ribbon. Not me, I use whatever I like. And if it's wild, great. Whatever colors I want, whatever designs I want, that's what makes it mine. And uh, not only do they always have pockets, they have a waistband that is made of buttonhole elastic and that way they can adjust it anywhere from like a size small to a 3X. It helps a lot of people to be able to just go ahead and purchase that skirt without having to order a custom skirt. I think it's important, one, because it's just getting more and more difficult to find nicely made clothing whether it's native made or not, you have to be able to provide for your family and there may come a time that you have to do that again. It is something that is very important for people to know how to do. I've still got my little swimsuit from when I was two years old that my mother made for me. Things that are handmade are so valuable to people. The sentimental value, if it's someone you loved, they just tend to stand the test of time so much better. And it's a good way to help tell the story of your life. I never dreamed this would happen. I am so thankful for the support that our tribe is giving us in putting on this show. This fashion show is a huge opportunity for each of us to get our work out there get our names out there. Hopefully this will vault us into that next level.
My name is Julie Perkins. I am a Cherokee artist um, specializing in ribbon skirts and beadwork. Even though we are doing contemporary art, it's still tradition. It still needs to be passed on. Sewing especially is a lost art form. A lot of people don't know how to do it anymore. A lot of our native fashion is to be worn to a powwow, to be worn to a ceremony. I want stuff that our women can wear every day and be proud of and rock it. Ribbon skirts is kind of a new trend. Um, of course, they've been around forever, but the contemporary ones I have done for two or three years. My grandmothers, my aunts have always sewn. So that always interested me. When I was about five, I remember asking my grandma, she was piecing a quilt, and I remember asking her if I could help and I messed up a stitch and it scared me to death. I never wanted to touch sewing again. But as I got older, my sister-in-law's niece came to me and said, hey, could you make one of those? And I was like, well, what, what are you talking about? Let, let me see what this picture is. And then my mind just goes crazy because then it was like, well, it would be really cool if you did this and added this. And then in the process of it, I thought, these are really cool, but how do you look at them and know that's Cherokee? How do you know this is us? So through the process of that, I thought, okay, what, what are Cherokees known for? And the first thing that comes to my mind is basket weaving. And so then my mind was like, okay, well, what if you wove ribbon and put on the skirts? And so then that led to experimenting there. So every skirt that I make has something that you can look at it and go, that's Cherokee. Anything with thread, I, I love working with. Um, any, anything that you sew, be it beads or ribbon or fabric, that's just how my mind works somehow. I, I just love it. I, I love the fact that I'm not an actor, I'm not a singer, but I can make you look good in what you're doing. My style, I call contemporary tradition because the dress itself is contemporary, but there's always a nod to our ancestors. Without them, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be where we're at, we wouldn't be thriving. But with my work, you can wear it anywhere, you can dress it up, you can dress it down. Oh my gosh, it, it's like a dream. I, I still keep thinking I'm dreaming this, that this isn't real. When you see my collection, I, I want you to be happy that this is native fashion in a contemporary form. My work is, um, I'm not everyone's cup of tea. Either you like it or you don't. I, I am super honored to be in the company that I am with, but my skirts are not like what everyone else does.
My name is Kenny Glass. I'm from Little Kansas, and I live in Tahlequah, and I make ribbon skirts and different kinds of textile art, and I'm a Czech artist. My work is inspired by the people around me in our community and in my family, and um, I also am inspired by different artists as well. Um, I love to um, admire different art, and especially Cherokee art. I like to do, I like to see art shows and stuff, and to me there's nothing more exciting than like a Cherokee art show. I like to just see all the different Cherokee art, and I just have a really good appreciation for it. I think it's important for me to keep going um, in this art form is just to get my own perspective out there and just to keep doing what I do the best I can and just to make sure my voice is heard through my art in the best way I know how. The different kind of art I make, I try to always make sure it comes from my perspective as a Cherokee person um, and I'm also just I'm inspired by the people around me and especially for this this show, I think all the pieces I created, they're all shiny. I really do enjoy things that shine and they get your, get your attention and they're hard to work with. And I, you know, this, there was a couple of these skirts that gave me some trouble, but we got through them. <laughs> but I really, that's what, you know, draws my eye and I, I'm attracted to those things. I think I made my, the first ribbon skirt I made, I started sewing probably 10 years ago, and that was the first thing I started with was a ribbon skirt. When I first started sewing, um, I was at a dance with um, one of my friends, she's actually Seminole, and um, I saw she had on this bright, shiny red skirt, and I was, and I, I didn't even know how to sew yet, but I remember thinking like, oh, I wanna try to make one of those, cause I just loved it. And then when I started trying to sew, that was the first thing I wanted to do was a skirt, and then um, it's just, been a, a hobby of mine since then. I think I, I enjoy sewing. It just makes me feel good in a, in a good space. I, you know, I get home after work usually, and that's usually what I do every evening almost. And it just puts me in a good mood and just gets my mind off things. And um, I just really in, enjoy doing it. I'm really honored to be included in this show. I know there's some some people in the show that's their work I really enjoy and I look up to their work and I'm 
I really appreciate what they do, so it just makes me feel good to be alongside them. And just to, I, it makes me happy that people appreciate my work. And, um, you know, I just, that's one reason why I do it, is just I, li I like to see people happy with what I make. I think one thing that I, I would like them to know about, you know, especially not just my skirts I made for this show, but the models that are wearing them, they're people that are close to me. They're not, I wouldn't say they're, they've done modeling before. I just, they're my family, my cousin, my niece, and my friend and her two daughters. And it's just, it, it just, that's one thing I like to do with my work is I like to involve um, people that are close to me and I like to include them and just to let them know that they're, you know, they're a part of my world and that's what keeps me doing what I do.